Good morning, and welcome to Early Morning Prayer with Calvary Episcopal Church. I'm Kendra Martin, and I will be leading um, us this morning. Um, if you're here, please say hello or good morning in the comments. That would be lovely. Good morning, Gail. Uh, Today, the church remembers Channing Moore Williams. He was a missionary to Asia. He was born in Richmond, Virginia in 1829, ordained a deacon in 1855. The Episcopal Church sent him to China, where he was ordained a priest in 1857. In 1859, he was sent to Nagasaki, Japan, and in 1866 was consecrated bishop of China. Good morning, Joanna. Uh, in 1868, Japan was open to far greater contact with the West than before, and he determined that he could achieve best results by concentrating his efforts on Japan. In 1874 or 77, um, a new bishop, Samuel Isaac Joseph, I'm not even going to try and say that last name, was consecrated for China, and Williams went to Tokyo, then called Edo or Yido, where he founded what is now St. Paul's University. In 1878, he helped unite several mission efforts in the formation of the Nippon Seikokai, the Holy Catholic Church in Japan. All right. And then today the church was said, oh, good morning, Leanne. Good morning, Betty Jo. And today the church also remembers um, Samuel Isaac Joseph. Sure. I can't say this. Um, was born in Lithuania in 1831. Went to German to study for the... Uh, Rabbinite there, became a Christian, emigrated to America, trained for the priesthood, and was sent by the Episcopal Church to China, where he devoted himself from 1862 uh, to 1875, translating the Bible into Mandarin Chinese. Wow, that's impressive. Good morning, Rick. In 1877, he was elected Bishop of Shanghai, where he founded St. John's University and began his translation of the Bible into Wenli, the classical style of Chinese writing. He developed Parkinson's and was largely paralyzed, paralyzed uh, resigned, his, resigned his position of bishop in Shanghai and spent the, the rest of his life contemplating his Wenli Bible. All right. The last 2,000 pages of which he typed with one finger that he could still move. Wow. All right. Um, Oh, here's a little fun fact, largely because four years before his death in 1906, he said, I have sat in this chair for every 20 years. It seems hard at first, but God knew best. He kept me from the work. He kept me for the work for which I am best fitted, largely because of the quote above. Uh, he has been chosen as the patron saint of the Anglican Internet mailing list sometimes known as the Cyber Parish of St. Sam's. That's kind of fun. Okay, it's about that time. <clears throat> Again, I'm Kendra Martin, um, and this is Early Morning Prayers with Calvary Episcopal Church. I think I've said good morning to everyone so far. So let's take a moment to center ourselves, and I'm going to get another hit of coffee. And we'll begin. O 
Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from uh, what some call Ecclesiasticus, other calls Sirach. But it starts at the first verse of chapter one. All wisdom is from the Lord, and with him it remains forever. The sand of the sea, the drops of rain, the days of eternity, who can count them? Height of heaven and the breadth of the earth, the abyss and wisdom, <clears throat> who can search them out? Wisdom was created before all things, and prudent understanding from eternity. The root of wisdom to whom <clears throat> had the root of wisdom to whom has it been revealed? Her subtleties, who knows them? But there <clears throat> there is but one who is wise, greatly to be feared, set upon his throne, the Lord. It is he who created her. He saw her and took her measure. He poured her out upon all his works, upon all living according to his gift. He lavished her upon those who love him. They fear the Lord. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is the crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish. She ran down knowledge and discerning comprehension, and she heightened the glory of those who held her fast. The fear of the Lord is the root of wisdom, and her branches are long life. Unjust anger cannot be justified. For anger tips the scale to one's ruin. Those who are patient stay calm until the right moment. Then cheerfulness comes back to them. They hold back their words until the right moment. Then the lips of many tell of the good sense. Tell of their good sense. In the treasuries of wisdom are wise sayings, but godliness is an abomination to a sinner. If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments and the Lord will lavish her upon you. For fear of the Lord is wisdom, and discipline, fidelity, and humility are his delight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Thomas and Art and Raymond and Rick. Our psalm today is Psalm 16 hold up, and 17. And that begins on page 599 in the Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my God, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a godly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is a fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for everyone. Going on to Psalm 17. 
Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. <clears throat> weigh, weigh my heart. Summon me by night. Melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your path, my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand, for those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who assault me, from my deadly enemies who surround me, they have closed up their hearts to pity, and their mouths speak of proud things. They press me hard, now they surround me, watching how they must cast me to the ground. Like a lion greedy for its prey, like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront them and bring them down. Deliver me from the wicked by your sword. Deliver me, O Lord, by your hand, from those whose portion in life is this world, whose bellies you fill with your treasure, who are well supplied with children and leave their wealth to the little, the, their little ones. But at my vindication, I shall, I shall see your face. When I awake, I should be satisfied beholding your likeness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now a reading from Acts, starting at the first verse of chapter 28. After we reached safety, when we, we then learned that the island was called Malta, the natives showed us unusual kindness. Since it had begun to rain and was cold, they kindled a fire and welcomed all of us round it. Paul had gathered a bundle of brushwood and was putting it on the fire when a viper, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. When the natives saw the creature, Hanging from his hand, they said to one another, This man must be a murderer. Though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. However, he, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Excuse me. Excuse me, I felt that coming. <clears throat> They were expecting him to swell up or drop dead, but after they had waited a long time and saw that nothing unusual had happened to him, they changed their minds and began to say that he was a god. Now in the neighborhood of that place, there were lands belonging to the leading man of the island, named Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitality, entertained us hospitality for three days. It so happened that the father of Publius lay sick in, a bed, in bed with fever and dysentery. Paul visited him and cured him by praying and putting his hands on him. After this happened, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came <clears throat> and were cured. They bestowed many honors upon on us, and when we were about to sail, they put on board all the provisions we needed. <laughs> Three months later, we set sail on a ship that had wintered at the island, an Alexandrian ship with the twin brothers as its figurehead. We put in, put in at Syracuse and stayed there for three days. Then we weighed anchor and came to Regum. After one day, after one day there, a south wind sprang up, and on the second day we came to Puto, Putoli. 
There we found believers and were invited to stay with them for seven days. And so we came to Rome. The believers from there, when they heard, uh, heard of us, came as far from the foreign of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. When we came into Rome, Paul allowed him allowed was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, my cat just ran through the house. <clears throat> Caught my eye. And now from St. Augustine's prayer book. In God's presence, think through the day ahead. The work you will do, the people you will encounter, the dangers or uncertainties you face, the possibilities for joy and acts of kindness, any particular resolutions you need to renew. Consider what might draw you from the love of God and neighbor. The opportunities you will have to know and serve God and to grow in virtue. Remember those closest to you and all for whom you have agreed to pray. And now in the quiet of your heart or in the chat, let us pray. And good morning, Linda Gale. <clears throat> Continue to pray for all working in education for our teachers, our students, our parents, and our support staff. For Becky, Donna, Linda, Leanne, friends and family in Florida. For Doug and for Noah, for Kevin and for Andrea. For Susan, Alan, Fred, Jimmy, and Elizabeth. <clears throat> I'm reading prayers of the people on Sunday and I printed it up to <clears throat> practice last night and um, some of these kind of stood out to me. So this is, oh, for Traveling Grace next week, for Rhonda, Susie, Dave, and Mary. <clears throat> this is from the Prayers of the People on Sunday. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and the peoples. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. For all who live and work in this community. <clears throat> and this is the one that really stood out to me. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended. It's really kind of struck me. Ask God's blessings, guidance, and strength in all that lies before you. Gather up these thoughts and reflections with the words our Savior taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and now call it remembering Samuel Isaac Joseph and I can't say his name oh God who in your pro providence called Joseph Sherwinsky to the ministry of his church and gave him the gifts and the perseverance to translate 
translate the Holy Scriptures, inspire us by his example and prayers to commit our talents to your service. Confidence, confident that you call, that you uphold those whom you call through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now remembering Channing Moore Williams. O oh God, who in your providence called Channing Moore Williams to the ministry of this church and gave him the gifts and the perseverance to preach the gospel in new lands, inspire us by his example and prayers to commit our, our talents to your service, confidence that you uphold those whom you call through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And a colic for Friday. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our closing colic. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Everybody have a great Friday. Um, you know, this weekend, it's, you know, on Sunday, we have Basement Church at 630. Then we have uh, Eucharist at 8, Parish Breakfast at 845, Formation um, concerning the capital campaign and changes to our building structure um, at 915 on Sunday. And then we had 1030. Um, we have uh, Eucharist again. So everybody be safe. Uh, morning prayer at 8 o'clock. And I will uh, see you next week. Peace, everybody.